Today I'm going to be working on guitars number 56 and number 57. That is the Zero Coat and Western Red Cedar topped guitar for number 56 and for number 57 it is the Tiger Myrtle back and sides and Redwood topped guitar. And that's actually a stunningly figured Redwood topped guitar. Where I last left off with number 56, I was installing the carbon fiber rods alongside the truss rod. And where I last left off with number 57, I was carving the zebra wood neck. So what I'm working on today is not as sexy of a topic as, say, neck carving or brace carving or voicing or fret work or any of those more nuanced and um, really the, the kind of topics that we talk about in forums. What I'm working on today is more of just the routine uh, jobs that need to get done with every guitar that aren't especially interesting or talked about. But do stick it out with me here because I think there's a lot of little tips that you can pick up that may, maybe you can incorporate into your own building that will just make the process a little bit easier for you. All right, so in the last video, I said this. Here, I'm going to have to route a little pocket here for the truss rod extension. That's a normal job right there that has to be done later. So I'm just telling you that now because I won't be able to push this all the way in yet. So with that said, today I'm going to be clearing out a pocket in the mortise for that truss rod extension to sit. So to cut out my pocket for the truss rod extension, I start by drilling a hole through the top. This hole is just slightly further out than the distance that the truss rod extension extends over the top. You want to be a little bit generous with where you put this hole so that your neck fit process isn't complicated by the fact that your truss rod extension is potentially rubbing up against the soundboard. And here before I drill, I'm just reaching into the sound box and just double checking that I'm not going to drill into a brace since with this guitar, I have a completely uh, rethought up bracing pattern and it is possible that I would be drilling down into a transverse bar. Now, if I drill into a graft, like the fretboard graft that you commonly see on a X-brace pattern, that's okay. It's okay to drill straight through that graft. I just don't want to drill into a brace. Now I drill a hole in the mortise itself that is slightly deeper than the height of the truss rod extension itself. So I've got two holes. And now it's simply a matter of cutting out what is between those two holes. So I start by scoring two lines along the softwood of the top there, and a number 11 razor blade works great for this. And then I follow that up with a small keyhole saw to remove the rest of the material. Okay, up next, installing the threaded inserts for the bolt-on mortise and tenon. Now, the most important thing to notice here is that I'm actually bracing the tenon on both sides with those two calls and the clamp directly over where I'm drilling the hole. This is because the tenon is a narrow protrusion of wood and you can imagine putting that pressure in with the drill bit or even now with the brass insert that you could actually blow out the whole tenon with that pressure.
Okay, and that's it for today, guys. So now I'm just gonna drill out the holes for the bolts through the neck block for our bolt-on mortise and tenon. And then I'm going to adjust the neck fit and attach these necks. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. If you learned something here, please give this video a like and subscribe so you can be notified when I release a new DIY guitar making video. And if you want to really learn more, take one of my structured online courses at ericschaferguitars.com or register for a hands-on guitar building workshop here with me in Burnville, Pennsylvania.